Hello everyone, welcome to Woke Wednesday. I'm in a new location and I'm also late as going to be the thing until we get our acts together. And by we, I mean me. Hi everyone, welcome to Woke Wednesday. How are you, how are you, how are you? Drop an emoji in the comment section and let me know how you are feeling this week. I tried this last week, so let me do it again. It probably is the same goddamn emoji that I've been using for the longest time because, you know, everything is fucked. Um, <clears throat> there's my emojis. So it's cursing, it is sad face. Um, hi, Tanya. Um, so, dear friends, my God, it is Wednesday and so much has transpired this week. Let's start first with what has happened here in New York before I go on to the rest of you know the executioners so yesterday we saw that governor andrew cuomo has resigned from office um on the heels of countless uh sexual harassment allegations now here's the thing because people came for me on twitter and you know that i genuinely usually don't care at all when people come for me on twitter but i feel like people misconstrued what it was that i said Here's what I said on Twitter about Cuomo, because I will say this, given everything that has come out about what he has done, what people are alleging that he's done, what the 167 page report um, that Tish James walked us through has done, is this. I will tell you that last year at this time, Cuomo was my guiding light, my family's guiding light, and without some steady leadership, right? Like we were dealing with a fucking lunatic in the White House and people were dying. No one was doing anything about it. No one was even fucking talking about it. And so Cuomo for me during that time and my family was the beacon that we needed. We needed some stable fucking leadership. So I don't want folks like rewriting history and pretending that now you have learned these other things about him which are nefarious and terrible, but that that discounts the fact that during the height, and we're still in the crisis, which I will talk about, but during the beginning of COVID, we needed a steady hand, a steady voice, and somebody that was actually gonna follow the science and the data. He was that person. So yesterday, I heard cable news pundits talking about like, well, in his resignation speech, he wants to take, he wants to take, um, you know, take credit for what happened in New York. Who the fuck else can take credit for what happened in New York? Who the fuck else could take credit for the fact that we were the epicenter of COVID in the world? And because of somebody who was following science and doing what needed to be done, our numbers began to drop and we began to find a way to phase our way back into normal life or normal-ish because we are not there. So you can at once say, yes, he needed to resign. Yes, we need to believe women when they speak up. Yes, we need to give credit to and understand that we should not be creating environments that are toxic and creating environments that are bullish. But I will tell you, from my years working in federal politics, I have known about the kind of environment that has been in the Cuomo world. And much like, uh, much like Anthony Weiner and much like a lot of uh, white male politicians that come out of New York, they are bullish, they are brass, they their offices turn over largely a lot unless those people that are elite, uh, have desperate allegiance to them and their power but yeah they're not great people they're not <laughs> like they really are not they are you know borderline egomaniacs um but because they're from new york and because they feel like they can throw their weight around they do right so this is this is not news to a lot of people. I would have never thought that he would have been a sexual harasser, but to say that his office was toxic and bullish and blah, blah, yeah, that's pretty much par for the course in, uh, in New York. So um, that's that on that. Uh, so what are you guys thinking? Did you watch his resignation? For those people that are in New York and actually give a damn, did you watch his resignation speech? So anyway, people attacked me on Twitter uh, and said that I was an apologist for sexual harassers, which you clearly don't know who I am and what I do, if that is what you think. But what I said was this, 
I wish that Democrats went after their own with the same fucking vigor that they do, that they, that they could, would go after Republicans with the same vigor that they go after their own. That is essentially the remarks that I was making is that if we had the same type of energy, the same type of we're not gonna take any shit, you need to resign, you're going down, and went after people the same way we go after members of our own party, maybe we would be in a different position right now in our politics. But that's not what Democrats do, right? When it comes to Republicans and their fuckery and their disgusting natures and their desire to destroy our country, Democrats are sitting around talking about bipartisanship and wanted to pat themselves on the back talking about, oh, look at this infrastructure bill that we've put together. Well, that's all great and fine, but guess what? I don't give a fuck about bridges and roads and subway stations if you know we're living in an, auto an autocracy, right? If we're living in a fascist regime, I don't really give a fuck. So until you secure my voting rights, until you hold the people accountable for trying to overturn an election, for putting together an insurrection and a coup to overthrow our government. Don't talk to me about bipartisanship with a Delft cult, with a party that is literally trying to kill its constituents and the rest of us in order to own the libs. So come at Republicans right now with the same fucking energy you went after Cuomo with. That's all I was saying. That does not excuse Cuomo, that does not excuse his behavior, but what it does call attention to is that when it comes to dealing with people that need to be dealt with, that need to be dragged, that need to be called the fuck out, Republicans are those people and Democrats are nowhere to be found still talking about my friend from across the aisle. What in the good goddamn? So what was brought up today on today's Woke AF2 um, by our friend who joins us, Kurt Bardella, regularly is this is that, you know, why do you think that Mitch McConnell signed on to the infrastructure bill in the first place? Like, I want everybody to think about the man who is notably, and by his own terms, the Grim Reaper of the Senate. Why do you think that he did that, made that move? Not because Mitch McConnell gives a fuck about infrastructure or the people of Kentucky because they're at the bottom of the list and a whole lot of things. He did it so that when we don't have bipartisan dealing around voting rights, and when we are talking about changing the filibuster, that he can turn around and say, well, you know, clearly there is bipartisanship, but now Democrats don't give a fuck because Democrats were too lackluster to go at this alone. I need Democrats to see the motherfucking long game instead of pretending like these cult members are people who actually want to fuck with them. I don't know about you, but if my friends tried to have me killed, you know, I would think twice about wanting to, you know, kick it with them and kiki. But Democrats are not like that. They're like, oh, yes, we want to applaud our Republican friends from across the aisle for doing something for the American people. And I'm like, wake the fuck up, okay? So when it comes to what I tweeted yesterday, I stand by what the fuck I tweeted. So I don't give a fuck if people are like, that's not it, sis, and you shouldn't say that, and clearly you don't know the facts. I know a fucking lot. You don't like what I say? You don't have to follow me. Plain and simple. Okay, so up to today, the executioners is the title of today's Woke Wednesday. So here is where we are with COVID-19, the Delta variant, and with what DeSatan in Florida and Abbott in Texas are willing to do in order to own the libs. So right now, and ignore the alarms behind me, we're in Times Square, right now, um, DeSatan has decided that he is going to cut the pay of superintendents and teachers and school board members that advocate for and institute mask mandates. So he is using people's finances and their livelihood, right? And holding that hostage as a way to ensure that the numbers of children that become sick and die from COVID-19, the Delta Plus variant in Florida, goes through the fucking roof. Here's the thing that I don't understand and the question that we all need to ask ourselves is how is it that these motherfuckers who talked about, you know, small governments, government so small that it can fit inside your vagina, so small that they are big footing over their school boards, their city councils, their mayors, all of these people that are also elected officials, right? 
So if you actually believe that in liberty and justice, then you should allow people who have also been elected to make fucking decisions. So right now, what we are seeing in Florida is that there are several very large school districts, Broward County and others that are saying, fuck you, this Satan, right? We actually interface with these children and their families every single day. And we are not going to toss a coin and hope that they don't die. When we know that we can take preventative measures like wearing masks, like social distancing, like following the science in order to keep our children safe. You see, Republicans right now are not on their pro-life tip. They are a death cult, right? Because I never thought, folks, that we would make it to a fucking place where we are talking about both sidesism for death, right? Like where, well, you know, there are people that are pro-mask and anti-mask. No, no, no. You are either pro-death, right? Or you are anti-death. Right? That, that's where the fuck we are. So when these people, oh my God, did you all see the video from Mediate today that is going around of a school board meeting in Tennessee? In a school board meeting in Tennessee, there was a mob of angry white parents, right? No masks on, harassing, threatening in front of police officers doctors and health professionals that joined the four hour school board meeting in Tennessee in order to talk about why they need to have a mask mandate in order to keep your children safe. Caught on video are white men screaming at another white man telling him, the doctor, we know you, we know where you live, you won't be safe anywhere in public. What the fuck? Mind you, folks, this is the same protocol that has been used to harass women seeking abortions and either bomb, kill, or torment into not doing abortion services that people have been instituting since Roe v. Wade. This is the same people. So we went for, so imagine this, we went from a place of applauding, right, doctors, thanking them, thank you healthcare workers, thank you essential workers, to now we're threatening their lives because they have taken up their oath in keeping us safe. I don't, un like when I say that I don't understand where we are, where I feel like this must be one of, you know, one of the places in Dante's Inferno where I feel like if you were to describe hell to me, this is where we would be, that we have, are overproducing in terms of vaccinations while other countries, poorer countries, are literally losing thousands of life because they don't have the hundreds of millions of fucking dollars to be able to churn out vaccines, that they are not one of the producers of it. So people are literally dying in the street, but we have to bribe motherfuckers in this country. And then you want to go to school board meetings and threaten those people that are trying to save your life? Where the fuck are we? Think about that, right? And once again, I am watching on these videos as police officers are there and do not a goddamn thing. So you want to talk about why folks say we need to defund the police, why police don't actually fucking do anything, don't stop crime, don't help people. The only thing that they do is torture and threaten and harass black and brown people, right? In order to fill their fucking quotas. That's what they do. Ask me the last time that police officers actually stopped something in action. Actually, if something was stolen, that they got it back for folks. No, they're more likely to accidentally murder you if you call for help than they are to actually help you. So let's be clear about that. But when I see, once again, crazy mobs of white people doing, threatening, harassing, right, p folks, and then cops just standing there and just going, I guess that this is normal behavior now. This is not normal. Do not allow yourself to believe that this type of behavior that we are seeing is normal. The other thing that is becoming, uh, becoming regular headlines are fast food workers who are upholding the mandates of their corporations at McDonald's and Speedways and this place and that place to wear a mask when you come in and they are getting shot or beaten up. Like what the fuck? This is what
what Trump has unleashed. This is what the Republican Party has unleashed. And this is what their point was, absolute and total chaos. Why? Because when you breed chaos, anxiety, instability, what does that allow for people to do? Run amok. But then what happens? Then people start to get scared and they believe that everything is out of control. So then what do you do? You bring in another autocrat who maybe is better spoken, more intelligent, but has the same sensibilities as a Trump. And they swoop in and you tell them, we're going to instill law and order. You can't trust these Democrats because they don't do anything for you and they won't help you. But we will because we're going to put the crash down on these terrible people. That's what we're going to do. That is the first step in us falling face first into American tyranny. All of this is purposeful, folks. They want the country to burn, right? They want everything to fall to crap. It's the reason why you have Bill sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk when he was leader of the Senate and he called himself the Grim Reaper. Oh, everything dies here except for the 300 federal judges that he put in place. Why did Mitch McConnell do that? Because he knows that voters don't really remember things after a certain bit of time, right? But what we do know is that many of the civil liberties that we have been able to get haven't come through passage of laws in Congress. They have come through the courts. So if you own the courts, right, as Republicans do at this very moment, then you don't have to worry about these little old policies that folks are enacting because by the time that it gets up to the federal courts and to the Supreme Court, which now is a six to three court, you're fucked. And because you know that our Congress doesn't actually work together to do anything, but you give people a little sprinkling of normalcy in passing of an infrastructure bill and passing of this thing over here that won't really have any bearing on your immediate life, you can give the facade of normalcy. But at the end of the day, this is part of a, large, a larger plan of destruction. It is part of a larger plan of destroying our democracy. So these executioners right now, DeSatan and Abbott, if they are not held accountable for what they are doing, just like I presume that Donald Trump won't be held accountable for what he did to get us to this very point, things are only going to get worse. They're only going to get worse. Right now, and I've said this all the time on Woke AF, is this, if there is no accountability, what are you teaching people? For those of you that have children, what do you teach them? If they draw, use crayon and draw all over the wall, and then you say, oh, that's pretty artwork. Right? And then all of a sudden it isn't just the wall, it's the carpet, it's the furniture, it's anywhere that they go. Because guess what? You have taught them by your inaction that what they're doing is okay. It is the same fucking thing with the Republican Party right now and with Donald Trump. The reason why folks are like, oh, well, he's not still a threat, even though he very much is one. And oh, well, you know, there were good people inside of the Department of Justice. So, you know, he wasn't able to overturn the election, but the next person will be. And in order to instill fear and make sure that that doesn't fucking happen, Donald Trump and every single one of his enablers need to be on a perp walk headed to fucking jail and need to be indicted. It is not just about holding them accountable. It is about ensuring that what happened over the last four years will never happen again. It is about creating guardrails and patching up the holes that Donald Trump created in our democracy. So that the next person who is smarter and savvier and a lot more strategic won't be able to maneuver around because we've learned our fucking lesson. But alas, here we are, eight months post insurrection. We've only had but one hearing about it. No one has been indicted. We have investigative reporters that are doing all of the work that I believe, you know, our Department of Justice should be doing. Because I wanna know, why isn't Clark in jail, right? He wrote a memo, a memo to Rosen and others that said, you need to say that the election is fraudulent. This is what the president wants. Well, to me, that's threatening and coercion. And also, you know, illegal. 
But this guy is still gainfully employed and still hanging around. Donald Trump still sitting at the omelet station in fucking Mar-a-Lago. And so when I get pissed off about the way in which Democrats always resign, Democrats are always held accountable for their actions. We don't have a healthy fucking republic if you only have one party that believes in the standards and rules of law. Don't we understand that? Do we not get that? And I feel like every goddamn day, I just scream into the fucking ether. And I'm like, who is paying attention here? Democrats as well as Republicans all want to sweep things under the rug. Oh, the American people care about what you're doing for them. Well, what you're showing the American people is that if they were to commit crimes, they're the ones that are going to be faced with the minimum mandatory sentencing. They're the ones that you're going to throw under the jail and throw away the key. But as long as you're white, as long as you are rich, as long as you are male, right? As long as you are straight, you're good to go. Because the system was fucking built for you. I, I don't, you know, we want it, we, we prosecute in this country. And I say it, and I'll say it again, because I say it all the goddamn time. Low-level drug offenders, right, are prosecuted more than the people that cause the housing meltdown. Right? Low level drug offenders, low level dealers, right? Attempted theft. George Floyd lost his life, was murdered in broad daylight over the thought of a counterfeit dollar. You had the whole of Wall Street in on the fucking destruction of the middle class, which comes through home ownership for their fucking greed, and nothing happened to them. And that was under a Democrat because the banks are too big to fucking fail. No, it means that white people, rich white men are too rich and too white for us to do anything about because they own all the fucking judges. I am tired of it, right? And I want all of you to be tired of it too. Not tired in the way to tap out, but tired in the way to tap in to your fucking rage. It is inexcusable where we are now in this pandemic. But because we have built a country that is all about what it is white people want, what it is that white people need, and you know, just what, what do you need? What do you want? You know, what can we do for you? Everything that Democrats offer is in reaction to what they think Republicans will say and do. That's not leadership. That isn't leadership. But you're asking me right now as midterms will gear up in 2022, you're asking me to give you more power and you don't do dick with the power that I gave you to begin with? That doesn't make any sense. And it's not enough for them to offer to us that we are not Trump. It is not enough for Nancy Pelosi to say, look at all the myriad of bills that I've passed in the House when you know that that shit isn't going through the Senate. I don't need your campaign slogans. I need accountability. I don't need your prayer for the people that are doing us wrong. And giving the gavel again will ensure that they hammer us into the fucking ground. I don't need that. I don't need you pretending that we have a functioning democracy when we do not. Right? I don't need you to lie to me. I need the fucking truth. And I find that these days it is very hard to find. You know, a huge, with two minutes left, folks, huge climate report came out. And I tell you, I unfortunately have to watch the news every day, most of the day. And when I'm not, I'm in Twitter reading articles that folks are posting, right? In order to make you aware of what I think is important. But here's the thing, major climate change report comes out that tells us essentially we're fucked, right? That should have been the title. And not near a newscast covered it. I saw one person, Andrea Mitchell today on MSNBC mention it. But for everybody else, it was a fucking footnote in the last two minutes of their closing yesterday. California is on fire. The Dixie fire, the Dixie Prairie fire is the largest fire in history of California. How many times do we have to see things as it relates to climate and hear the word historic once in a century, never seen before? before we recognize that we are on a pattern of destruction? We had Joe Manchin, King Cole of West Virginia, say that he didn't really feel comfortable with the climate change language that was present in the infrastructure bill. 
if we are only focusing on bridges and tunnels and roads, what difference does it make if they are up in flames or flooded? Right? Like we are still operating with 20th century solves for 21st century problems. And it's because the average age of the people that are sitting in power right now are like 70 something years old. And I'm not an ageist, but I'm saying we need people that are actually present in understanding the problems of today and are ready to solve those problems and not with the tools of yesterday in thinking that nothing has changed. Everything has changed and everything is changing extraordinarily rapidly. And we are doing nothing, nothing to ensure our own self-destruction. I'll end with this. You know, every single sci-fi movie, post-apocalyptic is always about something to do with aliens coming down and destroying the human race. No, we don't need aliens actually because we are doing a fine job ourselves. What it has been is about the destruction of our understanding and relationship to one another as human beings. The fact that I care about what's happening in California, even if I live in New York. The fact that I understand that what is going on in Turkey and in China will eventually get to the United States. The fact that I am part of a larger system, right? But when you are fed this bullshit of American exceptionalism and this idea of the cowboy going in alone, that you exist on an island of yourself, then you lack the ability of compassion to care about what the fuck else is going on outside of your own front doorstep. If there is nothing that the pandemic has taught us, it is that we are all connected whether we like it or not. And to, so to think that what happened in New York the other day with a heat dome and smog dome that was literally stationed over New York City. It came from California and everybody was shocked. And I'm like, because you don't learn science anymore and you don't understand how fucking things work because we've politicized everything. Folks, we are not on a good path. No, we are not building back better together. We are not whatever slogan is being spoon fed to the rest of us. We are in serious fucking trouble. And if folks are not raising the alarm, if you are not concerned, then you are not paying attention. That's the kind of conversations I have on Woke AF every single day. So if you want more of honesty, unbridled truth, and shots with no chaser, then check me out on patreon.com slash Woke AF. Thank you all so very much for joining this week's Woke Wednesday. Quick note. There will be no Woke Wednesday next week. I am taking a much needed vacation, but I will be back the following week for all of you. So this video goes up, share with your peeps, share, share, share. And if you wanna support independent black queer voices like mine, then head over to patreon.com slash Woke AF. As always, power to the people and to all the people power. Get woke and stay woke as fuck. Until next time, wish me well on my vacation. I'm not watching the news and I won't be in Twitter. If you see me in Twitter, tell me to get off of Twitter. Okay, bye.